Coming up on this week's show, we discuss the most important part of any car, your tires. So all of this comes together in some wizardry and we end up with a tire. Yes, that's it. Wow. Well, okay, slow it down slow, lock, lock, lock. And our celebs go head to head on our Jim Carner course to win money for charity. Sure, 140 now, there we go. Brakes, brakes, brakes. More braking, more braking, more braking. So you need to do more braking. Ah! <laughs> Next gear. Before funny guys Joey Rastin and Rich Luby have a crack at being racing drivers, it's no laughing matter. Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Speed Stars. Now, last week's episode, we had two ladies who are very used to commentating on sport, but we gave them a chance to explore their competitive side. And in the end, it was Elma Smith who posted the faster lap time. Julia Stewart, not far behind, sitting in fourth position on our leaderboard at the moment. At the end of our season, we are gonna have 20 names on this board, eight of them, gonna make it through to our finals where they get to show off their real race craft in a race around SWAT Corps. Our next two contestants are very competitive. They're taking victory very seriously. What we're gonna find out is which one is gonna be laughing at the finish line. So that's, that's me, my name is Rishlu. I know. Colored guy named after Brandy. <laughs> I made it, that's all that counts. I didn't go into the push. Come on. What are you gonna cover you when you got my car? My goodness. <laughs> that was lack of. We are seriously going places. I thought you just had a sauce. Well, it's always good to have a, a good laugh. I, I hope we're not going to be laughing at your driving abilities. Is there a lot of pressure, yes. Rishri Joey? A lot. Not on driving, on being funny. No, there's more pressure on driving than being funny. Yeah, I think there's more pressure in driving. Can you drive? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're going to find we're going to find out soon enough. But like, when did you know that you were funny, Joey? That time when I told a joke to the teacher. The teacher was very short, and then I said, "You you probably drink your husband under the table." <laughs> And you drink under the table. How old were you? <laughs> no, that's a joke. I don't know. Oh, no, I mean, you told that story so beautifully. I was believing. I was believing it. I was believing it the whole way. But we're going to come to you because I know you had like a yeah. proper job. You were like serious financial advisor. Dude, I can't believe I it. I don't know, know if I'd ever you. take advice. Would you take advice from him on where to invest your money? Not if that is the hell. I didn't have a sister. Oh, oh yeah, then, then he was clean cut. Yeah, uh, Richly. <laughs> talk, talk me through the name. I mean, there's there's a lot that goes into it. it's Richelieu B. I, I'm assuming B's for Brandy. Yeah, yeah. it's actually for Bonnoir, which is my surname. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> I know. It's and what, it's, I just want you say it. For it's, it's so it's so exciting. Do you think that's why you were nominated for like a Comics Choice Awards in the public category because they just thought yes, Richelieu <laughs> Brandy. Yeah. We got to vote for this. Just, uh, yeah, people are just voting for me. They didn't know what they were voting for. Uh, how did you get into comedy? This is actually my tenth year in comedy. I got into comedy very randomly. I just was funny around the prize stand, and another guy in Durban just said, "Come and perform," and I just went to perform, and I just started performing. Yeah, but hang on. That first moment, standing up, open mic, cheese like, but that must be yeah. the most precious situation anywhere in the world. Yeah, and that time nobody knew about comedy basically. Yeah. No, there wasn't an industry. So yeah. there was maybe the underground, the comedy underground, and Hurricanes, Joe Parker's yeah. Hurricanes, and the Blues Room in Joburg. Jeez, remember that, eh? Yeah. And only four clubs in the entire South Africa. I remember doing the underground. Yeah. Hectic, eh? Hectic, and I did it in Afrikaans. And, uh, yeah, right, and it was an accident. Like, if I had to drive that day, I would have been dead. <laughs> <laughs> it was that bad, right? Huh? It was that bad. But, but there is pressure. You know what it's like when you stand up there, everyone's like, it's fine telling jokes to the fire. I think, Jesus, guy's funny. But when you get up there, people yeah. have paid money, and oh, you yeah. think you're funny. They're almost kind of going, 
pr prove it. Yes, do, yes. do you feel that pressure when you get up on stage? I think I used to. Like now, we you, you basically not that you don't care. You're just more confident in in your, your material. Funny. Yeah. yeah. So you also, just, mm, it's experience. Yeah. yeah. It's like the more tracks you drive, the better you're gonna be. I like the way yeah. he keeps going back yeah. to the racing. Eh? He's yeah. quite serious <laughs> about the about about, about yeah, the yeah. about the driving thing. Yeah. You spoke, Joey, about the industry at the moment. Listen, yeah. it's flipping amazing. The quality of comedy that we have in this country is it because we've got a government that provides us with a lot of material? <laughs> but, but 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 I guess it's also the industry. Yes, I mean like Goliath and Goliath with their comedy clubs. There's so many more venues, so many more opportunities. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And also the other thing that when I started that now more apparent is the black people is buying tickets to comedy. Okay. Whereas when we started, it was David Kauk, Akhisula Tiga, Tsepo Mokhali. Yeah. You know? Colored people the, too. Yeah. 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 It was Mark <laughs> Motri. And then now it's like, dude, there's guys that you won't even know that's selling out 5,000 seaters. Yeah. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And that's yeah. the huge difference. And the comedy minds have also grown as well. Yes. Like now you can't do email jokes yeah. or flimsy stuff. Interesting. I mean, talk to me through content because you're right. You yeah. can't go and use like, these run of the mill jokes. Yeah. How, how do you put a set together? And, and like, do you test it against the dog with your dog or your wife or your girlfriend? Have you got like a test audience? Um, personally, I just I just jump on stage and try it on on a crowd. Um, oh, really? It's a litmus yeah. test for comedy for me. I, don't, I just mm. I just try it on people because like when you first start off, you're not like not confident. So you will because what some guys do is they take your conversation that you've just had. Like, yeah. <laughs> like hey, what's up with bot plugs? Yeah, yeah, every time you pull a plug on the smell, yeah. And then the next thing you see him doing it on stage, you're like, no, so. He's referring to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he steals conversations. Subtle, eh? Subtly. Referring to me. So, so like, yeah, so yeah, people steal conversation, but like, for us, I think we just steal. write through, through um, experiences and just try it on people. So, what, so you have material that you trust already. So if you try something new and it doesn't work, you just put something old. Mm -hmm. Like these guys, that if you have a conversation with me backstage before and you're speaking about something, don't be surprised you're going to hear about yeah. it on stage. But that, that, yeah. that for me is what is so flipping exciting because <laughs> that's real live comedy. Yes. It's not and like that's this... how you try and come you're... up with new material, yeah. right oh. material. Acting, brother. Yes. Some good movies, eh? Ah, thanks, man. You are so... You know, people no, no, don't know, no, no, no. people yeah. don't know yeah. you yeah, are Mine weren't that good, though, but listen. Yeah, but people don't know you were actually a, a bomb actor, bro. Like back in the day. Yes, yeah. Right. Listen, I know you can see you sucking up to me. I know you want me to kind of give you give you a good lap time. I know, I know, Jay. I've known him for flipping long enough. Well, let me tell you one thing that isn't a laughing matter is tires. Those four black things that most of us pay no attention to. This week's safety lesson is going to give you the lowdown on tires, sizes, markings, tire pressures. This is an important one. We pay such little attention to them. They're simply something our cars happen to come with. Yet tires are the most important part of our cars, withstanding the harshest conditions to keep us in contact with the road surface at all times. Which is why companies like Goodyear spend millions of dollars each year developing these complex multi-layered miracles. So in average, I would say we have about uh, 20 different materials. So starting with uh, polymers, uh, so natural uh, rubber, uh, synthetic rubber. We have uh, carbon black over here. So uh, very important, very important. Also today, the new tires include all silica. So as you can see, it's very, very volatile. So coming out of sand. Vaccines, which protects our tires on the road. Again, the sun, again, uh, gasoline on the road. Further on, and most important, at the whole end is the sulfur. So that makes our uh, compound cure. So all of this comes together in some wizardry and we end up with a tire. Yes, that's it. Wow. From the initial design to final production takes an average of two years. And this includes hours of testing in all conditions, both in laboratories and in real world testing on test tracks. If you think about that the tire is the only point of contact between the vehicle and the road. You can already have an appreciation of how demanded is that tire from a performance perspective. Now, that tire is also gonna influence how the vehicle handles, how the vehicle you know, grips, and, and all the characteristics of that vehicle interacting with the road. These animations give you a really good idea of how that contact patch, which is no bigger than the palm of your hand, is constantly changing while you are driving.
The markings on the sidewall of each tire tells you all the important information specific to that tire. What do the numbers and letters mean? The first number is the width of your tire and is measured in millimeters, 225 mils in this case. Next is the aspect ratio of the tire. In other words, the height of the sidewall as a percentage of the width of the tire. The lower the number, the lower the profile. Lower profile tires give you better grip when cornering, but the ride is less comfortable. The letter indicates the internal construction of the tire. R for this case stands for radial, and almost all tires are a radial construction. And that's followed by the inside diameter of the tire or your rim height, and is given in inches. The next two markings most people don't know too much about. The number is an index and indicates the maximum load the tire can carry when inflated to its maximum safe pressure. In this case, 88 equates to 560 kilograms of load per tire. And finally, the speed rating, which is the maximum speed the tire has been certified to carry a load safely. Why in this case is good for 300 kilometers an hour. Were you freaked out a bit by what you learned today from a safety perspective? I was, hey. I learned the, the stopping distance thing was, 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 a, was a mind blowing because yeah. we feel very comfortable at 140 on the highway, whatever. But seeing how long it takes you to stop, I think it changed, it kind of made you, me aware of, of how dangerous it is, hey. Well, I suppose, like we said, you're sitting in this insulated environment in the car. You don't know how fast. Yeah, you, you, know, you don't know how fast it looks. And that was perfect conditions. We had like the greatest set of Goodyear Eagle F1s on that thing working perfectly. Yeah. Imagine you looking down to change a channel or pick something up. Something happens. I mean, there are a lot of factors that can change. Joey, for, for you, oh, oh, please well, tell me you're going to leave you and you're going to be better and safer. Yeah, I am. The one thing that came out today is that if you've been driving our automatic car for a long time. Don't try and drive a manual car. It's <laughs> not you pulling the clutch out. <laughs> yeah, I, what he's talking about is coming up in our parking challenge uh, for charity. It was actually quite funny. I've never, ever seen a clutch smell like that in a parking challenge. It wasn't even <laughs> flipping off the line performance. But guys, listen, that was all good and well. Uh, yeah. we, we've made you safer, and now we want to make you faster. Yeah. But that is coming up after the ad break. And welcome back to Speed Stars. Now, over the past two seasons, we've had a whole host of guests from all walks of life, a whole variety of industries. But you know, there's been one thing that's been common between all of them, that hunger and desire to win. If you at home have that same urge, here's your opportunity. So head to our website, www.speedstars.co.za, predict the winner in this week's matchup, and let Goodyear reward you with a 3,000 Rand voucher to spend on any Goodyear tires fitted at your nearest HiQ center. Speed Stars isn't just about going fast and winning prizes. We and our guests want to make a difference in society. So every single week we have our charity challenge where proceeds go to one of our lucky charities. Even though it's all warm and fuzzy, that competitive spirit remains. After losing last week's parking charity challenge, Chops is hoping that his team has a need for speed as they go head to head against Mike's team on our Jim Corner course. Guys, this week's Charity to Challenge is about the best driver around this Jim Corner. So this is serious. So we just need to apply ourselves more and make sure we win this one. Amanda! Wait, <laughs> we are gonna win. <laughs> First up, it's Elmer against Ryan. I'm sure she'll have lots to comment on if she wins this one. Go, 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 go. It's close. Come, come, come. No, it's done, it's done. Come, guys. First blood, two chops in his team. Julia Stewart, that sounds like a racing driver name already. Julia Stewart. Wow, what a pep talk. Joey getting Julia all fired up as she takes on Danae. Our instructors are wanting to win. And Danae bowls another maiden over. That was still a good job. 
And it's all square. The Blitzbock against the motor mouth. And Justin puts a foot in touch with the line in sight. Waka is going to beat me, but it's fine. But he's going to eat cones. Okay, slow down, slow, lock, 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 turn in. Joey has to win this to level matters. Quaka certainly feeling the pressure. Oh, this is so close. Neck and neck. Oh, Joey overshoots the box. Nice one, Quaka. <laughs> so this is a cool thing, two and a half thousand rand to uh, Quebec. Very, very nice. So all of that hard work went to a good cause. Well done, guys. <laughs> That's 2,500 rand donated by a Volkswagen to Quebec. Our two guests make a living entertaining people and making you laugh. But let me tell you, the life of a stand-up comic is a high-pressured and demanding one. So they should be right and ready for the demanding pressures of the racetrack. Each of our celebrity guests receive expert advice and on-track training from the VW Driving Academy instructors in the Golf GTIs before switching to our race spec polos for their hot lap training with race aces Mike and Chops. Oh yes, they are back. Chops, of course, the man who changed the face of local motorsport and Mike, the multiple production and touring car champion. That's it. <laughs> Far left now. Now harsh break. Harsh third gear. Harsh break. Harsh. Oh, 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 oh. That's off the brakes. Take in. There we go. You smooth that now. Keep it like that. Don't accelerate now. Accelerate out. Accelerate, accelerate, accelerate. Right now you go to fourth, it's going to be a bit sluggish out here. Oh, oh, so RPM. Oh yeah, cool, there we go, no problem. Got to learn. Take a 140 now, there we go. Brakes, brakes, brakes. More braking, more braking, more braking. Turn down, good. Of the clutch, tap in. Here we go, accelerate, 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 accelerate. Keep it like that, nice and smooth. Brake, brake, down to second, more pressure. I'll help you with the brake pedal, turn it in. Okay. You need to do more brake. Ah! <laughs> Joey. Next gear. Most there. Most there. Feet on the front. Flat now. On one. On the exit. Keep breathing. That was very good. Cool. Now you're in. Oh, sweaty from this one. <laughs> I sweaty. Yeah. Pretty cool there. Focus. Yo, huge focus. Fast, eh? Yeah, on yeah. track, as <laughs> yeah. cars go. Very fast. First time for you. Have you have you ever done this, Joe? You've been on a track before. Yes, I've been on a track. Uh, okay, dark horse, eh? Yeah. <laughs> well, no, not, 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 not a really dark horse, oh, a semi dark horse. And, and right. I know I can tell you, because I've been on a track before, I'm going to come last. Lower the expectation. That's also ah. a comedic. It's a comedic <laughs> skill. Lower the expectation. And no, it's not about the expectation. <laughs> it's about knowing yourself, guy. It's like you're not gonna go in a plane and then someone go fly the plane. But you drive a car all day, every day. Just because you can drive a car. Doesn't mean you're a good driver. Doesn't mean you're a driver at all, in okay. general. Because you're just behind the steering wheel and putting foot down. That's, that doesn't make a driver. That safety challenge taught us that yeah. there's so much more things that makes a driver. <laughs> well, well, Rishu, I mean, you've been in a lot of our charity challenges that we've, that we've done through the series. You, you've been at the top end of, of the timing sheets. Yes. You drive a performance car yourself. What was it like being on track with the instructors? Did you learn a lot? I learned a lot, eh? because like now I have a, a, a newfound respect for people who do that all the time because it's a lot of concentration. Like, break now, turn now, yeah. go into the apex. Find the apex. I'm like, uh, apex. <laughs> what, what, what's an apex? apex? I need a Pythagoras. <laughs> flow, flow, flow. You guys put on the calculators. <laughs> lift. Yeah. Like, I, when I said lift, I thought the car's gonna lift. <laughs> I'm like, my goodness, where's the car? Adjust the aero pilot <laughs> take off. Don't lift. Then I said, don't lift, don't lift. Then no, I'm like, I don't even know I'm lifting. Bro, I don't know. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, so. Well, the nice thing is, when you get to your hot lap, which is coming up next, there's gonna be no one telling you what to do. No lift, no nothing. You're on your are you ready for that? I'm, I'm hopefully, I think yeah. I am, yeah. 
Well, I can tell you, this is going to be a laugh, guaranteed. <laughs> I just hope they can drive fast. Let's find out. The challenge. Two stars, two cars, one track in a head-to-head -head race around Swartkops. Each with their own start and finish line, whoever completes the two laps fastest wins. I'm going for my fastest, fastest lap. <laughs> we certainly hope so, Joey. Well, it's all serious business as their two-lap race gets underway. For two guys who make a living with fast retorts and witty one-liners, we were expecting some hilarious in-car hot lap commentary, but instead they are trying to outdo each other in the race face department. After the first lap, the guy who said he'll be the slowest star of the season has the early lead. Richler is going to have to use less B and more A to win this one. Joey making our Goodyear Dura Grip sing through turn two. That's the look of determination. Now Rishu has the polo on rails through turn eight. Perfect line and plenty of exit speed. With half a lap to go, he is on a charge. Well, it's interesting, the different approaches to turn six. Joey fast in slow out, Rishu opting for the fast out option. But which is quickest at the end of the day? That was amazing. My goodness. <laughs> that was lekker, guy. Yo, sweating like a pig in a bacon factory. <laughs> Joey? Yes? You in particular reckon you were going to be right at the bottom, you can't drive, you're useless. It looked like you were going okay there. How do you think you went? The car was faster. Oh, were you just holding on for dear life? Yeah, that car <laughs> was. I was. I was telling Richelieu, now that you don't have an instructor next mm. to you, you don't really care anymore. you like, this car is fast, this car has got robust, you got the helmet on. What happens, happens. <laughs> <laughs> then you just drive. Then you're like, well, then you're like, look, if the car is going to roll, it's going to roll. If it's not going to... You're going to be fine. I'm going to be fine. That's what you said. Richard, how, how do you feel? I don't know. I don't feel too confident now. I felt <laughs> confident at the beginning, but now... Hey, listen, the top eight times are what matter here. Yeah? I'm hoping you guys are going to be somewhere on that board. Please. Like, not right at the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> Who wants to go first? Joey. Joey. Are you sure you want me to go for it? Joey. <laughs> yeah. The man who said he's slow, he's absolutely, like, he's ab all, absolutely all flipping right. useless. He's going to have a no, a no lap time that's going to be worth <laughs> anything. Let me tell you something. This could make you feel very excited. And maybe you'll even do a little hair flick for Whoa. us. <laughs> you can tell the fellow comedian, Jason Goliath, that you kicked his butt. What? With a 127. <laughs> a 127.25 in your fastest lap. That was flipping impressive. Rishi, let's have a look at how you did. Now, before I reveal your lap time, what yeah. is important, there was a two-lap race. You yeah, guys yeah. were going head-to-head. -head. Yes. So I'm going to announce who won that two-lap race before I reveal the fastest lap time that you set. Oh, okay. Right. The winner of that two-lap race was, in actual fact, Fine. Joey? No! <laughs> you, hey, but that doesn't mean he had the fastest lap time. Oh. He could have won the race and still... Yeah. Uh... But he did beat you. <laughs> <laughs> but I tell you what, a 129.54 sees you in uh, second and third position, my chaps. Well done. Wow. It's not now who's long. laughing? <laughs> now, now who's laughing? All I know is, yeah. if we have to drive again, well, you probably beat me, whatever. But <laughs> the thing is, I will even go for it more. Because now you know where, what corner. Well, you could be going for it more if you end up in the top eight at the end of the season, because then you're going to race in a race on the track. Yeah, at Swart Corps with eight other cars. It's going to be amazing. Both of us broke 130. Very, very impressive. Yeah. Now, the cool thing is we ran a predict the winner competition with you, our viewers at home. One of you actually thought that Joey Dustin could drive a car fast, and you were right. So let's have a look at who that lucky viewer was. Congratulations to this week's lucky winner. You will love the drive with your advanced driving course from Volkswagen Driving Academy.
We had a feeling that this would be a closely run race, but I think the person most surprised by the result was Joey himself. Well done on winning that battle. And congratulations too to our winning viewer, winning that advanced driving course of VW. If you want to get in on the winning ways, head through to our website and enter our Predict the Winner competition. Our guest pairing next week, these guys are the hot steppers. They know a thing or two about speed. We'll see you next week, but until then, check those tire pressures, keep it safe on our roads. Fast and fearless, Quacker Smith has been a revelation on the rugby park this season. As part of the all-conquering Blitzbocker team and the Lions, it seems he has the same approach to driving. You keep your foot on the pedal. I grew up on a farm, man. You know that on a gravel road, you don't take your foot off, otherwise you're going to start slipping. Going up against his Blitzbock teammate in the show, it isn't Justin Gedult's trademark hairstyle that grabs attention. It's his natural ability and standout performances on the field. Will he be a standout on the racetrack, though? I knew what I was, what I was supposed to do. A little bit more cautious, huh? Yeah.